We apologize for the delay. We were having some Wi-Fi issues. Everyone, please rise for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Justice for all. Good evening. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the Ake Harbor City Common Council was provided in the following manner. Advance written notice of this meeting was posted on the Ake Harbor City All Bulletin Board. Advance written notice of this meeting was posted on the Ake Harbor City website. Advance written notice of this meeting was sent to the Hamilton Gazette and the press. The meeting is being conducted via Zoom and conference call. The meeting is also being recorded to air on the Egg Harbor City website, Channel 97, and the Egg Harbor City Facebook page. Roll call, please. Mayor Gepetti? Here. Atanisi? Here. Clark? Here. Dash? Here. Uh, Councilwoman Galloway will not be here. Heist? Here. Hesse? Here. Timbers? Wright? And Councilman Ritchie will not be here. They told me in advance. I don't know about you. Okay, we need a um, motion to approve the minutes from the February 23rd meeting. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going to open the floor to public comment. And if anybody from the public, either in council chambers or on Zoom, <coughs> has anything to comment about on the agenda items for tonight's meeting, now is the time to do it. All right, we're going to close public comment. Mayor's presentation. So we have to come. I know we don't want to, but <laughs> well, you guys can okay. sit if you want. I'll, you guys just stay right no, there, and I'll call you up one by one. How's that? Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's what we're, that's what our plan is. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't walk too far away. <laughs> okay, so every year I do police awards. Um, this year we changed it a little bit, and what we're calling our awards this year is Outstanding Service Award for 2023. And we had two officers that uh, the chief selected for outstanding service. And I'm going to call them up right now. We'll have Chief say a few words, and then we'll move on to our numerous others that are here tonight. Um, Patrolman Tom Waite. So <clears throat> there were so many different incidents that could have and were recommended by the sergeants um, for the Outstanding Service Award. This particular incident happened in March of 2022. Um, Patrolman White actually saw a vehicle that had been listed as a stolen motor vehicle out of Hamilton Township. Um, he confirmed that it was stolen. He attempted to do a car stop. The car took off. There was no pursuit. However, he did find the vehicle after it took off from him. Um, he and Sergeant Mangold got into a foot pursuit and were able to apprehend the subject who had stolen the vehicle. Um, so that was just absolutely great police work all around um, from paying attention to the stuff that's going on in the area, um, checking the track flyers to see what's stolen and then doing some proactive work. So very proud of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Next outstanding service award for 2023, don't go too far, <laughs> is Patrolman Justin Kantz. <laughs> um, this incident just happened recently in December. Uh, there was a report of a subject who had stolen a weapon from a house in Hamilton Township. They gave out the description and Officer Kansas was able to find that subject at the train station, apprehended him, and then subsequently um, found the weapon that the subject had thrown. So <clears throat> again, all around great work, just taking a look at everything that's going on, responding to a call, and then getting a gun off the street. So uh, great work. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, and we have quite a few awards tonight um, that actually just happened this week. So we thought it would be a good opportunity to bring the officers in and have a little chat about them. So the next officer is, do you want to say first, what, or do you want me to bring them on first? I, I can talk about okay. them. I think they might prefer that. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um, this week, Tuesday, 8.15, you know, most of us are just finishing up our second or third cup of coffee, getting into the groove of things. We were dispatched out to our third call of that shift. Um, our shift starts at eight o'clock. So everybody was all over the place and some officers were, had come in to go to the range. Um, Sergeant Mangold was actually preparing to head out to the range. He's one of our firearms instructors. And uh, <clears throat> Officer Rex went to a call. There was a call for a person who had locked themselves in a bedroom with a knife. Um, going through a somewhat of a mental health crisis, uh, had threatened to burn the house down. Um, the smoke alarms were going off. Officer X got there um, and went and made contact with the people who were in the house, got everybody out, went to the door that uh, where the subject was locked um, and did confirm that there was smoke and that she was in there. When everybody else arrived, um, the door was unlocked and there was a fully engulfed bedroom on fire. Um, Sergeant Mangold, Officer Rex, Officer Rodriguez, and Sergeant Landesini. I have never been prouder of officers in my life. This woman had a knife, was not dropping it, and what could have easily escalated into a use, a lethal use of force without smoke and flames and fire, um, wound up having all of the officers safely and uninjured um, come out of there. And the woman was able to be brought down the stairs to safety and then subsequently treated. Um, this is an instance where <clears throat> the tactics that are taught in terms of de-escalation and, and crisis intervention were utilized. And again, something that could have gone sideways so quickly, they were absolutely amazing. And again, I've never been prouder of anybody that I've worked with. And before we bring the officers up, I have the uh, fire chief, Butchie Kinsley, and he'd like to say a few words about the incident. Uh, pretty much the chief uh, hit everything on the head. Um, they did a heck of a job, hell of a job, uh, to go into that building with all that smoke. Um, you know, without firefighting training, you know, we're, firefighters were trained. We had turnout gear, we have air packs. They went in there blind. Uh, it could have escalated. It could have went south fast. Um, not only did they, when the firefighters got there, they kept us outside. They wouldn't even let us go inside. So they saved firefighters from getting hurt also. And uh, they are commended. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm good. Now we'll bring our officers up. We have Sergeant Nicholas Mangold. Stay up here. And just go to call in. And we have Patrolman Matthew Rex. And Patrolman Jose Rodriguez. And certainly our Superstar chief over here. She deserves recognition also. There were a few officers who were involved who are not here this evening. I have to say, when it came to incident command and coordinating fire EMS and police, Lieutenant Zach Perna was outside and as much as it bothered him with his firefighting experience to not actually be battling the flames, um, without him, this could have also been a bigger cluster than it was. Um, but he made sure that he was on fire radio, he was on police radio, and it was an absolute great job of coordination. Um, Sergeant Lenacini as well was here. I also need to thank the Hamilton Township Police Department, um, Sergeant Mark Perna from Hamilton Township came over and K-9 Officer Corey Silvio was also um, a big part of this operation. Thank you again to all of our firefighters. Um, without them, uh, you know, we'd be, I don't know where we'd be. And they're volunteers and it's amazing. And of course, we weren't going to let you go in there with a knife wielding woman. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and of course, Galloway EMS and Atlantic Care, um, and then South Star um, for medevacking the woman who was who did sustain injuries out. So, so we'll get a picture yeah. of everybody. If you want to just come come over here, so we can get the uh, seal behind us. We need a couple people over yeah. here. Yeah. All right, everybody, make sure you have your. Yeah, not shut that down. Okay, okay, just making sure. Wow, wow. I think I separate that. I know, come on. It's all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, can you guys stay for one second, please? Come in. Come in. Come in. Um, I do have one more presentation this evening, and I wanted to do it when there were some, you know, officers here and whatnot, but um, I, I know you can't see it now, but we have a wall of firsts, okay? So I wanted to recognize our chief, Marcel Allen, for being the first female chief of police in Ann Carver City. On that wall somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Right. <laughs> you guys can use that. Well, you can see we have a bunch of humble guys who really didn't want recognition tonight, but you know, I thought it was necessary. And we should be proud of our police department for doing a great job. And it just proves that they're police officers because they should be police officers. They want to be police officers. And they do a great job. Okay, so getting back to the um, my report, I'll try to make it free. Um, so we news this week, actually yesterday, we received word that the um, New Jersey, I mean, U.S. Department of Agriculture has looked at our request to have the grant repayment that we were supposed to pay back when we sold the water treatment plant. They considered um, well, our proposal and why we thought we shouldn't pay as much back as they wanted. They had us at five, three to five million dollars we would have had to pay back at the sale of the water treatment plant. However, our engineer, Brian McGowan, wasn't having any of that. <laughs> so he put together a very good proposal and argument as to why we should not pay that. So Weeks have gone by now. What is it, three weeks, Angela? Four weeks, maybe? Since, since we. Well, it's more like four months. months. <laughs> <laughs> no, since they got it up at the New Jersey, I mean, the US. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, about eight months. weeks. Yeah, about eight weeks. So they reviewed it and remo remember that this is the first, we are the first um, municipality to use WICA and not, have, not go to a referendum. So they, concurred with Ryan's assessment. Uh, we will get full credit for all our old investments before 1995. We will get full credits for all loan repayments, including the loan repayments we will make at the, um, when we close at, at closing. We will have, as we had stated in the beginning, we are gonna pay off our debt, which is approximately $15 million. So at that time, that will count as credits towards us. 
and we will not have to pay anything back for the grant we capture. So whatever, we, whatever we sell the water treatment plant for, which is 21.8 million minus our debt payment, minus our fire truck, um, it's ours. Nice. Awesome. Great job. Great job. Thank you. We also have to thank Angela because she worked very hard on this along with Ryan. Um, she's provided so much information that they needed. And, you know, she, her part in this helped us get this decision when we wanted it. So thank you, Angela. Okay, so real quick, I did mention the plan of the day before, but I'm going to keep mentioning it. It's May 6th. If there is a downpour, we will not have it last year. There was a downpour. Um, if it's a little cloudy, maybe a little few little drizzles, we'll have it. Um, Memorial Day, the, um, the American Legion would like to have it at Lincoln Park this year. Chief is in the process of finding about closing that, the uh, bike just so we you know, temporarily if possible, but I don't think that's necessary because we've never closed it before. It's just a little loud when people are speaking. So instead of going to the cemetery, as we have done since COVID, we'll go back to Lincoln Park, but there will not, there will still not be a parade. It'll just be a service. So I think it's better because Lincoln Park is visible to people. And when we put the wreaths out there and we have all the flags up, it looks beautiful. When people drive by, it looks really beautiful. So that'll be that. Um, I did speak to CME about the bike path from Dieselwood to the lake. And apparently now we have uh, tree frog issues um, according to the pine lands that one of the areas that the road goes through is has tree frogs. There's tree frogs everywhere. I know. The road was everywhere. Like, but Brian's going to work with CME. We do have teeny and studies that were done out there. Once we identify the location they're talking about, it's quite possible that we will not have to pursue it any further. However, if there are, if it is in fact a different section that we did not do a TNE study on, then we will have to do one in the spring. So that'll hold it up even more months. Um, we did have an issue with street lights being out we had over 100 street lights being out and thanks to our police department and also gary hess our perpetual citizen of the year eternal citizen of the year right yes, he, he bugged the heck out of the electric company to go and fix because that's how he is so right now we only have 29 lights out in the city so it, like i said the, i think the last meeting if you would like to download the app on your phone, it's very simple and it gives you a map and you just push where if you see a street laid out, you can record it to the electric pump. It does take them a while to get that fixed though. Also, just a heads up, the tennis courts are horrible again. I wish Ryan was here. I might just hold that over until the next meeting when Ryan is here because he can talk about it more. But um, we People do use that tennis court a lot. And I know some say nobody does, but the school uses it every single day. They bring the kids out there. Um, residents use it. I know personally my my sons use it and my grandson uses it. Um, and there's many other people. My my that tennis court has been here since I think the 60s. I mean, my whole family used to play tennis out there. Um, so I think it's something that we should preserve and try to fix again, even though we did fix it once. It's, in my personal opinion, it wasn't fixed properly, and that's what was causing this. That's what I was going to guess, was it done properly yeah. in the first place? I mean, it would not care, honestly, because with the way we did it, they pretty much were like, we're not guaranteeing cracks. Mm -hmm. It was kind of done mm -hmm. yeah. reasonably priced as we, <laughs> as we could. But it was reasonably maybe priced. Maybe yeah. something but we could look at to enjoy. But when, when, when they were fixed, they, yeah. they used yeah. it. You know what I mean? Or, you know, look at some brands. Yeah. I talked to I talked to um, Brian about that today. But anyway, so yeah, I, it wasn't fixed properly, and, and Gary can attest to that because he was the one really pushing that project and making sure that it was finished. And 
you know, he saw the way they were doing it, the concrete and covering the, the cracks. It just, you know, we knew it wasn't going to work, but it is what it is. Um, I did sign on with the county to do a, what's called a HIF study, uh, healthcare uh, insurance funds for the county. As the, you all know, the health, health insurance went up 24% this year. And the county's looking into possibly starting their own health care study. study. It's only a study. And so, they're paying. Yeah, they're paying for it. And I don't think that there's any problem with that. But, you know, just to find out if, if it would be feasible or not. I know when we first switched to the state benefits, I think we saved, what did we save, Julie? 200 and some, 250? Do you remember what we saved? It was a lot. It was, it was a big chunk of change. So we're definitely still ahead of the curve. Yeah. But unfortunately, this year, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Our um, we did look into the kit that is existing right now, but we're too small a group that they would decline with both of us. So if the county or state, you know, there are some other ones that wind up happening because of this, then we can definitely look into that. And I did forward the information to the um, part info mm -hmm. also about um. Not the one you just sent, but the one they sent out like first about it or whatever. And it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. And he said he was like, he was, I guess they had a meeting about it or we're looking at it. So they are trying to. So we'll see how that goes. Also, mm -hmm. I spoke with um, Joe Ritchie and also the Parks, Parks and Playgrounds Committee. The park that is next to Leatherhead, well, Firehouse Pub. Um, I would like to name it First Responder Park. The, the park does not have a name. The, as you already know, the, uh, the Atlanta County Fire Association will be here in November. Right, Butchie? November, November, October. October. And they'll be coming through town in the parade. So, you know, through the NPP funding, we're going to try to get that um, squared away. So it looks nice if, you know, we can honor them and the other first responders that we have. So hopefully we'll be starting that soon. And we had the NPP planning meeting. We have a subcommittee that is looking into what we thought was called the garden, yes. which is next to Crossroads, the empty lot. So we have hired a consulting firm, an architectural consulting firm to redo that park. And we decided it's, no longer a garden park anymore. It will be possibly Archway Green. It's still, yeah. Right? We're still, still up yeah, in the air. Green, the square, air. whatever. So Archway would be because we are going to have, we're going to replicate the old Archway that was over the White Horse Pike many years ago, and that will be the entrance to the park. So it's not going to be the parking anymore. Well, no, it will be. The will be designated parking for um, crossroads. Okay. And it, it could be a long process because we may have to go through pine lands because of the impervious surface that we actually put there for parking. <clears throat> so we'll do it in stages, but that will be sectioned off at Crossroads Park somehow. We're, we're, when we get the the work up that he's going to do, we'll bring it to council and let you know what that looks like. Probably won't be as much parking. Yeah. Yeah, there might not be as much. Um, what was it like? Yeah. And um, maybe you didn't notice, but we did manage to plant the spring flowers. They're kind of small right now, but um, we can't fertilize them today, so hopefully it'll pop up. We'll see, we're getting some nice rain tomorrow. We might get snow on Saturday. Oh, well, there were pansies. Okay, yeah, they'll okay, be enough. Have a long last. Pretty good. I know. And no words on the grants that we submitted. Yeah, so I'll let you know. And that's all I have. Thanks, ma'am. Committee chairs. Do any committee chairs, being we have new committees, and I know there was a thing set out. Okay. Finance, redevelopment, and safety is Councilman Ricky, who's not here. I have nothing on highway code enforcement. Code enforcement, I just have some uh, some quick stats. This is the, the, uh, the last report that I have from code. Is uh, February 1st, so this would be the January results. Uh, administrative duties were 36, certified mail, code compliance reports were 13, in person notifications 11, inspection 16, investigations 19, red cards issues 2, uh, telephone email notifications 25, TV tags issued 14, 
zoning reviews conducted 39 for a grand total of 175. Um, there, we've been getting some uh, questions about the, the bowling alley. Um, I, what I can say is that it is an active uh, situation that, that is ongoing that is being handled by code. Um, and when we can give you some more information, we will make that public. Um, but right now it's still it's still in the process of being handled. Um, code, code committee was trying to meet sometime next week. We're having a little bit difficult time coordinating our schedules, um, but we'll have a code meeting as quickly as we can. So, Thank you. Um, property, parks, and playgrounds. So many entities. Um, waiting for, I can't think of the name of the electronic um, app off the top of my head. It's off my brain. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I set up a date to do a, um, a brief over with you with them, get pricing and that. So I'm waiting for them to finalize that with me. And uh, that's really all we have. We'll have to have a meeting to discuss it. Okay. Anything on the school board? Councilman Ranks not here. License and ordinance. Councilman Clark. Um, we had a meeting yesterday. Um, there are two ordinances that are currently in place uh, that we're looking to amend. Uh, the first one is going to be regarding the informal reviews of developers' concept plans with the land use. Um, so we're working on that um, to possibly um, implement uh, fees in an escrow for these informal reviews. Um, and then the other ordinance that we're looking into amending is the junk vehicle. Um, to give more specificity as to motorized vehicles as opposed to just motor vehicles. Um, and also um, uh, the, allow the allowable amount of vehicles and some more of the definitions to give more of a clarification. Um, that way, uh, both our both department and um, our police department can work and do the job that they need to do to beautify our streets of Egg Harbor City. Thank you. Oh, and we're removing TARP. From the uh, from that ordinance, Councilman Timbers is in here. That's Liam Houston, Aaron Hapen. Any Rotary Councilman Hassan? Uh, uh, nothing really, other than the East. We're starting to work on East uh, Punch. And it will be April first with a rain date of April eighth. Um, we're going to start filling the eighths on the twenty eighth at our next meeting. But um, so far, and we have a meeting coming up on Friday just to discuss this with a small group. See what we what uh, we're going to do. I think we're going to do it a little bit differently this year. We're going to break it up into three groups, and so we want to have a little bit more um, organized and, and make sure it's a little more fair for the children. So the I'm not 100 percent sure that the age group, but each age group is going to get like two of the large baskets, you know, and then they're going to have, it's like 25 other small baskets and they're also going to divide them up. So it doesn't go to all the older children or anything. So there's just a lot of little things that we're working out, but we're working on it right now. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have anything on sustainable EHC since Councilman Galloway's not here? No, I do not. Okay, just want to make sure. All right, thank you. All right, Chief of Police. <clears throat> So the rest of this won't sound as eventful as ours would be. Yeah, we'll um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, number four, um, crimes and offenses. We had one aggravated assault, and this is from the time period between 223 and 39. So since we last met two weeks ago. Um, aggravated assault, we had one, two burglaries, one robbery, one reported sexual assault, three simple assaults, one stolen vehicle, and two thefts. We had a total of six motor vehicle accidents, one pedestrian stop, and 44 traffic stops. All of those yielded uh, 51 total traffic summonses. Um, we had four arrests. <clears throat> in there, you won't see anything about arson because we are still in the process of figuring out what we are doing in terms of charging for uh, Tuesday's incident. Um, otherwise, other incidents, we had six alarm business alarms, 123 crime prevention activities, Three domestic violence incidents, EMS incidences were 24, three new firearms ID apps, five follow ups, 671 property checks, and then four public service uh, calls. Um, in terms of operation support training inspections, um, we did not have any trainings over this last period. Upcoming, I will be attending a New Jersey State Association Chief of Police Chief training. Um, they offer it once a year, and it has to be within one year of your 
official appointment to the chief of police position. And last year, by the time I was officially appointed, uh, provisionally, it had already passed. So, um, as somebody jokingly, another chief said, you probably will teach the class now. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> We have that, and then another, uh, I think, very appropriate thing is Officer Caldwell will be attending a crisis intervention training, which will then lead up to a um, specifically for veterans training. Um, the Atlanta County Prosecutor's Office, along with Atlantic City PD, is setting it up um, so that there is a countywide team that will be able to respond out to veterans in crisis. Um, because there is that camaraderie and just the knowledge of any kind of issues that may have happened with um, <clears throat> with veterans. And as a, a current military member and as a veteran, Officer Caldwell expressed interest in doing that. So we are going to be sending him to that. Um, things that we've done over the last few weeks, it was Read Across America Week, um, Dr. Seuss's birthday. We every year go and read and we did again this year. And we always have a really great time. Scribe always welcomes us with open arms. Um, <clears throat> today, we had some officers in the community school. I believe we talked about this before. Um, each week, there is a class where they talk about different life skills, making smart choices, different dangerous situations. So our officers were in there today again, um, and we do that every week. And then I was asked to be part of a panel for the Women in Law Enforcement Symposium that was held at Stockton University yesterday. Um, I, along with retired Chief Donna Higby Garrison and Captain Stacey Schlachter, all of us who happened to graduate from the same high school the same year, um, were part of a panel um, that was moderated by a Stockton student studying criminal justice, uh, just discussing um, what it's like to be a woman in law enforcement. Um, <clears throat> so that was fun. Upcoming stuff. Our lovely partners, manager, general manager Kim and one of the other managers, Jerrica at Wawa, was going, they were going to be doing Coffee with a Cop on March 27th at our local Wawa. Um, and then March 22nd, you will be seeing Officer Kantz participating in March Dadness. No, he doesn't have any kids at the community school. Um, however, there are some kids who may not have father figures, so he's going to be playing on the team with them. Um, it's a fun time. It's a good time. Um, at the community school, so we will be out there cheering Officer Kansas here at this point. <laughs> but that's about all I have for you. Um, like I said, not as exciting as our two three minutes, but <laughs> that's okay. All right, we'll take it. All right, thank you. CFO report, Jody. Do you have anything? Thank you. Okay, city parks report. Oh, Meg, I didn't ask you about Jeff. I'm sorry. Skip you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention that the rabies clinic, the free rabies clinic, will be on March 18th at the Public Works garage from 10 to 12. Anybody who needs um, their pet vaccinated for rabies, uh, get, or then they can get the license if you're a resident of Bangor City. Pet, cats and dogs need to be registered, and you can get your license at that time. The rabies shot is for. All any resident of Milan County, so it's not just for the rabies shot, it's not just for Egg Harbor City, but of course, the licenses. And that's all. Thank you, Angela. Did you turn to report? Um, just a few things on the agenda this evening. There's the resolution number 15 for men fees that's the increase in part fees that we implemented. Um, number 18 is the fire prevention code changes that the fire official asked me to look into and myself along with um, Mr. Ritchie did look into it found that the statute and it wouldn't have been matched. Uh, there was a change at some point which was never implemented in our statute. So now we're good with the statute and the administrative code. And then finally, number 19, the stormwater control ordinance. This was mandated by the Pineland. Ryan took a look at it and told me today that there's really nothing to be changed. And the only thing we can change is to make sure that the chapters and the numbers are correct. And so it is basically what we have and what we're going to implement. Finally, um, we get it back here from the USDA and the news looks all good. And I thanks to the mayor. She was also instrumental in talking to the US. DA through one of its chiefs, and that Laurel. Um, she was the signatory on many of the letters that went up that I wrote. She signed, so it was a group effort. <laughs> and 
this is going to be a very busy week. We're going to meet among ourselves, um, Ryan, myself, uh, Jody, and Laura to work out the details of the closing. We're going to meet with New Jersey American Water, I think, at the end of the week to pick a closing date, which I hope will be close to the end of April. And as soon as we have final numbers, we'll give them to you. And it's been a long, long adventure, I'll call it. <laughs> but I think it's coming to an end. Awesome. Thank you. Great job. Thank you all for your very, very hard work in this endeavor. I'm sure the taxpayers will thank you also when it's all done. <laughs> Okay, um, moving on to our motions. Number 14, I need a motion to approve the American Cancer Society bike a thon June 11th, 2023, from 7.30 to 1.30. I'll make a motion. That's it. All in favor? Aye. Number 15, a resolution to amend the fees for use of facilities at VA Harbor City Lake. We went over this um, last meeting with Councilman Antonis. If there's no questions or comments, I need a motion and a second. Make a motion. Second. Roll call. Antonisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Number 16, need a resolution for budget, budget transfers. Any questions or comments? Okay. Motion? Motion. We'll second. Roll call. Antonisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Okay, number 17 is a resolution authorizing the city of Vancouver City to enter into a cooperative pricing agreement. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Antonisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Number 18, introduction of ordinance number two of 2023, amending chapter 150, fire prevention of the code of Egg Harbor City. I need a motion for introduction. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. So all in favor? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I need a motion for to advertise the notice of introduction in the Hamilton Gazette on March 15th for a public hearing on March 23rd. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 19, we need an introduction of ordinance number three, 2023, amending the chapter 170, land use and development, and chapter 233, stormwater control of the code of Egg Harbor City. I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to advertise notice of introduction in the Hamilton Gazette on March 15, 2023 for a public hearing on March 23rd, 2023. Motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, number 20, I need a motion to pay the bills. Make a motion. I'll second. Roll call. Antonisi? Yes. Clark? Yes. Dash? Yes. Heist? Yes. Hesse? Yes. Okay. Mayor and Council comments. Mayor, do you have any no, comments? No, I don't have any further comments. It's just nice to see all the police officers here tonight. I'm very proud of our police force and doing a wonderful job. Our feet, great job. Councilwoman Hesse. Um, I just wanted to um, say a few things. I want to thank um, all of our officers as well as our um, chief for the great job that they did all the time. And I'd like to um, just say one one little thing. I will be I will be handing out welcome packets for the it will be February and for February. And this will be the second time I'll be handing them out to new residents in A Cover City. And it'll be um, new homeowners actually in A Cover City. And I had gotten help from our um, students from the art. Uh, art class at uh, the Cedar Creek, and they did some really pretty uh, work for us, and it's all welcoming uh, art, so we're putting it on the front of the packets, and uh, we'll be passing them out to our uh, new residents. So uh, we're really, uh, I'd like to embrace our new homeowners. 
And the last thing that I'd like to say is have a safe uh, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Thank you for that, Councilwoman Pessy. Councilwoman Clark. Um, it's already been said a thousand times, and I'll say it a thousand and one time. Thank you to our police department and thank you to our fire department for keeping our residents safe and, you know, um, uh, something positive, you know, so a good positive news out of a Harbor City to, you know, continue the pride that, that we have and, you know, example of being a, uh, the perfect example of uh, Harbor Strong. So thank you guys very, very much. Councilwoman Tunis. I want to share a story about the police department. Uh, so if you come down my block, you know that all the kids play at my house. There's probably about 15 kids there every afternoon. So the other day, my mom said all the kids were outside playing. And next thing she knew, there was a cop car out back. And she was very worried that one of the kids did something or, you know, got into something. And she went out there and they were all playing basketball. So I just thought that was a wonderful thing to hear. My mom appreciated it because... There are a lot of kids that come over, so to know that there's no police presence, just keeping an eye on them, but that they're also out there hanging out with so that's pretty cool. I wanted to share it. And then finally, I just wanted to shout out Riley Lerner. She's from Stupid Creek. She, we had a nice little parade for her in town. She won the state championship for 120 pounds for wrestling. She's a female wrestler, which is pretty rare, and she kind of leads that sport. She's been wrestling since she was smaller than my boys, and she's Cedar Creek's first female wrestling state champion. So I thought that was pretty awesome that it's a girl, and I uh, just wanted to shout her out. And it happened during Women in History. Yes. <laughs> and Councilman Dash. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll be brief, but. The situation that happened Tuesday morning, anyone in law enforcement knows that that could have gone completely different. Um, I want to really commend the police department for their outstanding care in that individual. There was no uh, a use of force used that, that could have gone completely bad for that individual. So it's nice to see that they did their job very well. They were compassionate with the person who was, was in the room. Um, I, I can't express how proud I am of our police department and also our fire department. So the way everyone worked together was was absolutely perfect in this situation. I'm very proud of everybody. Thank you. And I'm going to echo Councilman Dash. Um, mental health is a very serious condition and unfortunately it is an, it is an invisible disability. You can't look at somebody and see that they have a mental disability. So the way those guys handled it, especially being young gentlemen, and they took the time with this woman to talk to her and to talk her down and to not have to be forceful, I commend them for that because a lot of people don't have the time and the patience to deal with people with mental health issues the way they did. So they should be very, very proud of what they did. And I know I am proud of them as sitting up here as a council person. Um, Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. You know, I guess everybody knows, but we have a 100% volunteer fire department, 100%. And Chief's here tonight, and he does outstanding work trying to recruit people, train people, retain people, and it's not an easy lift, you know. Um, the fire, we just sort of kind of take them for granted, like, oh, yeah, it's our fire department, but they work really hard, and they do so many things in our community that maybe you don't even know about. They pump out basements, they hang up the street signs for us. Um, they have, you know, events, they participate in everything that we do. The cleanups always, they're always welcoming to anything we want to do. We've done turkey giveaways there. So we are really, really blessed in a Harbor City to have such a wonderful fire department, a wonderful chief, and a wonderful police department and a wonderful chief of police. I mean, we're oh, we're like a family, Absolutely. and you know, that means a lot. And I think that's one of the things that makes a Parker City such an attractive place to live, regardless of what anybody else says. They make our town feel like home. Yes, they do. Yes. So thank you both for what you do. Give another six years, and you'll have my my firstborn son to be a, <laughs> a volunteer. <laughs> but you, you know, I appreciate you. Yep. All right. Um, any public comment in council chambers or on Zoom? Does anyone have any public comment? 
Seeing none, I need a motion and a second to adjourn. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye.